Today's video is a paid promotion in partnership with Native Deodorant and I'm really excited about this one because we got to use the deodorants for several weeks and get a really good feel of what they are and how they work and it's my favorite deodorant that I have ever used. If any of you are like me, I was like so impressed by how long the uh, de deodorant lasts. If you sweat a lot like me, which I do, it stays with you, the deodorant, until the end of the day. You can go to sleep at the end of the night and you can still smell it and it's beautiful. Some other great things about Native Deodorant is the texture, it's not sticky, it dries quickly and it's smooth. The scents last for a long time even after exercise. I usually smell like a potato after galloping but with this deodorant the scent lasts all day. The ingredients are awesome, it's aluminum free, paraben free and sulfate free as well as vegan and cruelty free and it uses natural ingredients such as coconut oil and shea butter. If you use my code you'll get 33% off. These deodorants are normally $36 for three and with my code you'll get them for $24 plus free shipping. I genuinely enjoy this product and will continue to use it because I'm used to smelling like a swamp troll after work and these make me feel like a woman. So I'm really excited to share this with you guys and I hope you enjoy them. Put it all out in the open, no we don't have to control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment, it's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Hey guys and welcome back to my channel Today I'm going to show you Milo stop yelling at me what I do in a day with my horses. Today's a weekend, so I don't do any clients today, other than I might do the one client that I have here today and then again during the week. But I'll show you what we do and what we get done. So yeah. See, ta-da. So we'll start, actually, should we start with Milo, Banksy, or Pogo? You pick whatever you want. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, so indecisive. So many choices. The grass is getting green again. The horses mowed it down quite a bit, but look at them all happy to see us. Why are they so cute? Hi, Pogert, my man. Okay. Yeah. I just zoomed in on your head. Can I show it? Grown from seed and they're just like growing like little weeds of amazingness. Because that made me crazy. This is orchard grass, and this is a fake electric wire for when the horses come out so they don't eat my juicy juice. <laughs> We've got to protect the baby garden. Oh, he's already pinning. Like small man syndrome, pin, pin, pin. I love how they're just so excited about the hay even though they have grass too. <laughs> like, <laughs> they do love it. Hi, Banksy. Except that you're just sweet. So Percy is co-owned by Janae, so she's probably going to ride him today, so further so I don't like electrocute myself like I did yesterday. I must have been the, the yeah. Hi Milo. Obviously it's good horsemanship just to let your horse go. Yes. There we go. What is she doing? <laughs> He's like, what are you? Oh, you go, girl. <laughs> what are they doing? Bean? He's watching. He's like, you guys are weird. Milo, you always look like you skipped leg day. Pulled Milo's shoes several weeks ago and he has the world's most horrendous feet. So it's taken him a while to adjust because his soles were seven millimeters thick, which is like obviously nothing. So he's been adjusting and he's doing pretty well. And it's really helped fix his hoof angles because his heel was super underrun. And also he had contracted heels and on top of the thin sole. So it's been a process. And then I'm ordering him his hoof boots soon because we finally figured out the sizing for that. But that's kind of why he's been out of like a full competitive work program because 
with the pandemic, I wasn't going to get a better situation than this to try and barefoot, so. Why are you such a food sniffer? Oh, you're gonna get the dog. Oh, he stinky. He does. There's nobody who hates more than Karen, This is my chunky boy. So, I haven't jumped him since like March. So, I'm hoping to start doing that soon once he's in a little bit better shape. Right now, he has like a casting material on his feet, which is like this stuff here. He's running around like a moron. So, he strips some of the cast off on that side. That's a cast on his hoof. And it's pretty thin along his sole. Basically, the only purpose for it was right after the trim to kind of just give his soles a little bit more protection because he just recently got trimmed even shorter when his recent trim. So it just makes it less of an adjustment. Normally, on like an average work day, I would be also going to the racetrack now. I'm working in town at the public track Hastings Racecourse for a few trainers galloping horses. That wasn't the plan for this year, as I have said on this channel before. And the reason why that plan has changed is because when I was working for a dressage coach, I stopped working there recently because there were some racist remarks made by said trainer and I was fired when I didn't agree with them. So good riddance. And now I'm working at the track, even though I said I was supposed to be galloping less this year. Now I'm galloping more. So. That's kind of why that's different, but the clips of me galloping are going to be from yesterday because today is the work day where the horses breeze and I'm not fit, so I'm not riding them for that. So I get today and tomorrow off. Tomorrow is always a walk day at the track, so no one gallops them. And yeah, so that's kind of the change. As I stare at your jacket, I want to know where mine is. <laughs> so since they're cast, this is not... Let's, okay, let's show cast. what the cast looks like so that if people are curious. Oh, he's already started to wear Good. through it. Yeah. Um, what's it made of? Like literal casting material, like what you wear when you break oh, Okay, yeah, just thinner than what we would do as a, like a, a full-fledged cast. Oh, well, you saw what they were doing this morning, yeah? So it's got roulette and Simon. It's from my store. I know. Yeah, you can order your own. Perfect. I would love to have one like that. As lovely as Simon and roulette are, I would love to have one like that now with Pogert and and uh, thingy Banksy on it too. <laughs> oh, that's right.
So with Milo, I always start off with a really good walk warm up where we work on our lateral work and just get him more supple and warming up his muscles that he's going to use for the rest of the ride. So yeah, I just move his body around and make sure he is supple both directions and get him walking around relaxed but forward. We also tend to do some walk halt transitions occasionally, especially if he is kind of resistant to leg at first. I'll do those just to get him working off of my leg a little bit more. And then after he has finished his walk warm up and warming up his body both directions, we go into our trot work, which is where I work on him stretching down and forward into contact on a looser rein and just stretching out and I don't ask him to really do much more than move forward and ask him to stretch down and relax just so he can get his body more warmed up before I actually take more contact and ask him to start working into the bridle a little bit more. This also helps him get moving more forward so that he's not backed off when I do pick up contact and ask him to actually work. So yeah, that's what he's doing here is just doing a stretchy trot, stretching down and forward and moving quite forward. You also notice in this video that I don't do a whole lot of circling and I mostly stay on the rail and the reason for that is when this arena isn't harrowed it is harder through the middle and with his feet getting used to being barefoot especially just after a trim I try to avoid the middle where there's like slightly more crusher dust and rocks because he's more sensitive to it so I've been mostly using the rail as he adjusts to this before he gets his hoof boots on because since his soles are still so thin he just needs less of a chance to wear them down to where it'll be uncomfortable so I try to avoid that so yeah, once he's warmed up after his stretchy trot, I'll pick up a contact and ask him to start working into the bridle while moving forward and just accepting the bit, pushing him into his corners, leg yielding him around the corners and moving him over so that he supples at the base of his neck and starts to relax in the bridle. He's a little more inconsistent in the bridle in this ride than I would want, but he hasn't had that many rides back after being off due to having his shoes pulled. And then at the canter, it's the same thing. When I first pick up the canter, I want him stretching down and forward forward on a loose rein and just being relaxed before I pick up a contact so you can see him doing that here and he's moving nice and forward at the canter and I always start out with his better direction for warm up at the canter just so that he's picking up his easier lead before I start to work him the other direction and then I also just use these poles when they're out so he can do some pole work and kind of focus and go through them calmly and then here we're practicing our lead changes he did this lead change very calmly for him so he usually has struggles with lead changes and staying calm throughout them and will be quite exuberant and kind of overdo it. So I only did the one change today because he did it so quietly that I didn't want to push it and have it be an issue where he might get hotter because it is something that does stress him out more. And also with counter canter, like you can see here, it's also something that stresses him out more. So I always counter canter him down the rail and then do a transition before the corner because he does sometimes try to switch leads going into the corner because he thinks I'm wrong when I ask him to counter canter so yeah we're practicing picking up the counter canter and cantering straight down the rail and then usually when I have a slightly bigger arena I will practice riding him all the way around the corner but today I didn't because he is just getting into work and I didn't want to have a battle if he did decide to switch leads so yeah we always transition before the corner and then we have our nice loose lining walk breaks in between things and I finish out the ride with a stretchy trot because he gets quite hot and sensitive after after counter counter and he's a little worked up so I wanted to stretch down and forward and relax before we stop and what do you call this kind of stretch okay he used to oh he's actually doing his lip like he likes it this time he, he's gotten a lot better with him he used to hate them pardon Tummy tucks. <laughs> oh. I'm just scratching it now, that's why he likes So this is a client horse named Aria. She's like eight years old and she's been off for a little bit so I'm just helping her get back in shape. 
So with Arya, I do a walk warm up, but we didn't film that. So when I do start trotting her, you'll notice that in these first several clips, she's quite resistant to the bridle and doesn't want to relax into the bit. She's not being heavy or really pulling, but she is strung out and she tends to throw her shoulder into the center of the circle and kind of fall in when she's going around corners. So what I do with her to get her to start using her body correctly is when I'm going around corners, I think of leg yielding into to a drifting motion and moving her sideways and same thing down the long sides I'll come slightly off the rail and then leg yield her over and this helps her to start relaxing into the bit and then when she does get strung out and strong I'm making sure that I am half halting her and just slowing my posting down a little and getting her to adjust her pace and if she doesn't respond to the half halts what I will do which you'll see in parts of this video that I will turn her and do smaller circles and I'll use the circles to slow her down and then the circles also help getting her to relax into the bridle and kind of start to soften in her mouth. So yeah, that's what I'm doing here is the circle but you'll notice she throws her shoulder in. So I'm working on putting my weight to the outside, inside leg on, opening my outside rein and just getting her to drift around the corner and start leg yielding around and this generally causes her to start softening so you'll see where she softens into the bridle and relaxes and then I push my hands forward and give with my hands a little bit but especially at the beginning of the ride she does struggle to soften consistently and go on the bit consistently like I said she hasn't been in a whole lot of work so it is hard for her and it's not going to be something where she physically can go around super consistently so what I'm doing in this ride is just trying to build up that consistency by using those tricks to get her to relax and get more rhythm and start pushing from behind more but also relax at the base of her neck and start to soften often in the mouth. She definitely throws her shoulder inside way more to the left than she does to the right. So I work her a little bit more to the left than I do the right. And this is just to kind of help even her out because she's definitely weaker to the left. And this whole ride, basically my end goal is working her to the point where she'll stretch down and forward like you see here. So when she does do that, she gets a big verbal praise and I push my hands forward to encourage her to stretch a little more forward and as further down as she can. Can or wants to so that's kind of the goal of this whole ride is just to get that nice relaxed down and forward frame and then work on the consistency of holding that frame as she develops further and gains fitness and I do use circles even when she is starting to stretch down and soften just to help keep her engaged and encourage her to keep stretching down and forward so these few clips where she's relaxing to the left are fantastic I was really happy with this because she was really starting to soften in the bridle and and it made a big difference because while she doesn't really pull or try to bolt or go faster she does brace quite a bit in the mouth so what we're doing is just trying to get her a little softer and more responsive in the mouth and then wanting to stretch down and forward is a really great precursor to getting that consistency in the bridle I want her to start doing this down and forward frame more consistently and then eventually I will start bringing her up into a little bit of a higher frame but the down and forward is what we want first so that's really the whole goal of this ride and once she starts to get that down and forward softness, I start to like slow down my posting, get her going a little bit slower and sitting on her bum a bit more. And then once we've gotten some of this consistent relaxation, I will start doing a little bit of work at the canter. But the reason why most of this ride is at the trot is because she ha needs a lot of work at the trot and going to canter and schooling her on that when it's harder, it's just not worth it. So yeah. And if I ever did have a ride where she just wouldn't relax at the trot well enough, then I would forego the canter in that ride. So I base what I do based on how the walk and trot work is. And I don't push for more if I can't get the bare minimum at walk and trot. So you'll notice here her canter transition is not bad. She puts her head up when she goes into it, but that's pretty normal and we're going to work on that. She is strong and she does brace a little bit at the canter and she's going quite fast, but the speed at which she's going has to do with her lack of fitness and it's easier to kind of pull her hind end with her front end and go quickly rather than slow down and really use herself, especially around the corners. So after the canter work I go back to trot and make sure we have achieved relaxation at the trot after canter and that she isn't 
running around and hot after she comes out of the canter and then also I don't canter her for longer than it takes just to get her to soften it and go into a little bit more of a rhythm so once she's relaxed the other way we canter again again her transition's not bad but you can see the transition's not quite as smooth to the left as it was to the right this is because it's her weaker direction she also throws her shoulder in more around corners this direction but she is going slower now so the relaxation trot work in between helped with her rhythm and just helped quiet her down a little bit at the canter and overall her canter is quite nice and powerful once she gets fitter it's going to be very beautiful so after we finish the canter we do the long and low trot work to finish similar to what I do with Milo and she's going beautifully long and low here this was probably her best clip for stretching down and forward so you see me here I'm stopping her with my seat rather than touching her mouse slowing my posting and then asking her to stretch down and forward relax at the walk and then we cool out and that's it it was a good improvement from start to finish so I was gonna ride Pogo but I'm gonna just do a light one to Penn State because he had a bit of a sore bum the other day after his hat um, and then also we'll just show you an update of his knee it's starting to scab over and as you can see the wound itself is really small that flap we're still waiting for it to come off I need to fly sprayed after but yeah the flap we're still waiting for it to thin up enough by the top to come off and then it, it's it'll like a little off. giant, well, no, a giant wart right now. Or the vet's going to come and cut it off yeah. when she comes and does his botulism vaccine. So He's been ridden about four times since he came off the track last year. So we haven't been doing a ton with him because he's still just young. So it's not a huge priority, but yeah. Let's take him on dirt. <laughs> She thinks he looks awkward when he does his funny little trot, but he's so cute. He looks fine to me today. Yeah, he does look better. He says, hi, I'm cute. That white bum splotch and his dorsal stripe are two of my favorite color features on him both of which he will end up losing as he grays out further, which is too bad because I think they're really cool. Good boy. Don't run into the post, Pogart. <laughs> yep. He's such a noodle. He says, hi, I like to go really close to posts. Oh, good boy. So yeah, Pogo's only in really light work. So he's only like, he just turned three. A lot of people keep asking me what his training program is. He doesn't really have one. There's no point in prioritizing getting him out all the time or anything because he's a baby. So like sitting around for a few weeks isn't gonna harm him whatsoever. So we kind of just do stuff with him when we can and when we want to and go from there. He doesn't get ridden very much. I'm a baby. I don't need to do anything. Oh, he's losing his teeth. Oh, let's take a look, my man. Can you show us which one's coming out, one little right fella? Here. Oh, look. Oh, yeah, you can see. See the change up top there. Yeah, so and this cute. other one, will, the other top one will be close behind oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can and see the change And then the matching the bottom ones, these will come out after. Pogo loves to come out on the grass here, but he's often a total booger butt in terms of he likes to just randomly canter about and uh, pull shenanigans and stuff like that. And now, last but not least, it is Banksy's turn to come out and do some things. Percy's pretty much bound to try to get in the way because he likes to do that. Yeah, so the other thing with Banksy is a lot of people ask me what his training schedule is and that to me is the equivalent of like walking up to someone and asking them what their college plans for their two-year-old child are. He doesn't have a training program, like this is training for him. Standing here tied and being brushed, this is training. 
going for walks by himself around the property, that's training. So other than that, like he doesn't really have an awful lot of expectations. Because our goal is just to make him have a positive association with everything we do. And you don't get that by pushing them to do too much too soon. So he's a pretty easygoing dude and he's very quiet and sweet and I kind of want to keep it that way. So. Ah, look at your bird beak. Oh. just enjoys it so much, right? Mm -hmm. Says I love my scrubs. It's pretty cute, right? I know. Oh, see, he even likes that. He leans in for, he really likes, like he's very um, comfortable with being petted and touched, hey? He says, I don't like that. He does. Kidding. I'm just kidding. Why is he such a crazy stud colt? Don't know. Hormonal freak. He says, I just can't control myself. Can I please have? Up. Oh, boy. Not Watch his okay. bum bum. <laughs> I think his little feetsies are actually really quite cute. Very nice and polite. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Pretty. <laughs> What a smoking good halter path you have. <laughs> it's actually really good after he got used to that. So he's going to practice a little bit of being led around. The wind is really blowing and he's feeling, it looks a little uh, like he's feeling a little spry. So it'll be fun to see if uh, sometimes when the wind blows like it's doing right now, he's um, a little more spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Good kid. Good kid. No. Oh, huh. He's such a spooky baby. He even care though. No, I know he doesn't. He's just a very, very good young man. Ears haven't, oh, she's a little pinning now. Pin, there it is, the grump face. Uh, okay, so, so. This stuff is soaked alfalfa Timothy cubes. So they all get this. Now what's going on? And the blue bucket is Pogo, and the purple is Banksy, and the red is Percival Mueller, and then that white bucket goes into Milo's special well, hanging bucket. They're green, so this is Milo's. I only feed green once a day, so this is what they get once a day. Turn it so we can see it. So it's a combination of rice bran and some supplements and some of his actual, like, uh, ration balancer or whatever it is. He gets the low sugar one. Oh, yeah, the low sugar pelleted form. Pogo Look gets a little more. Can I see? Oh, how, what do you want? Hi, what's going on? Pogo couldn't care less. He stuck his neck through the, the fence so he can get at the uh, okay, tarped alfalfa there. Same thing, they all only get fed grain once a day. So they don't get very much. Percy gets the most, but again, this is once a day. So this is probably about two to three pounds of grain, but it's once a day. What supplements do you incorporate into that? The pills that you can see in there are vitamin E capsules, which I forgot to put in Pogo's mix, so hold on. They're vitamin E, oh my god, capsules. And then they have rice bran, lysine, biotin, 
um, Grace Brown Lacing, Biotin, Copper, and Zinc. Which one is the one that the greenish colored powder? Is that the copper then? Yeah. That's what I would figure. And then they have a complete supplement, vitamin supplement. It's like a pellet. <laughs> there. Oh, you're so damn cute. Pogert. Okay, so we feed them all separate so everyone actually gets all of their food and they don't fight. And then we do with a hay while they're eating. I hate this hay so we're not feeding it, we're gonna get rid of it. Um, this is like a nice orchard grass mix that they really like and then I feed them alfalfa as well. And then It's really nice and fine. So they get yeah, the and fine and then the, they get more nicer, texture from the alfalfa. I don't even know how much hay they eat because I just feed them so that they have it in front of them all day. I'm gonna this zoom is in. the alfalfa. It's a really nice alfalfa like big square bale that we bought because it's way cheaper to buy them in bulk like this than it is to buy the little squares so we have this and they really like it because it's quite leafy but then it also has good coarse stalks on it so now everyone is done eating their grains so they're all back out together and that's about it for chores for the night because they have a big water trough so we only have to fill that like every couple of days. So now they just get to eat and hang out and then they also have their grass if they so choose. And since it's been raining a lot, they're not at their field place obviously, this is why they're home. So they'll be going back there as soon as the weather's a little more consistently nice because right now they just absolutely destroy the fields by tearing it up from running on it because it's so waterlogged. So I'm just waiting to get some good weather and then I'm planning on taking some of them back there. So yeah, that's a day in my life basically for like normal chores that I do. Obviously from day to day with my clients, it will differ for which horses I ride depending on what kind of schedule there's on, they're on. So during the week I ride some different horses, but yeah, usually it starts out with riding at the track and then I go on to do my other clients depending on the day. So yeah, I do some clients three days a week, some are in full training, some less. So it really depends on the day, but usually it's working with some of my horses and doing the race horses, feeding my horses and doing client horses. So. That's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed it and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and if you're interested in any of my merch, my blogs, or any of my other social channels, look down in the description below and check those out. Thank you.